welcome to all of you. The, the message we're trying to put over, which I hope you can see by what's on the walls, is good quality painting, drawing, um, that we can all admire and share in. There are a lot of people here I know that paint um, as amateurs or part-timers, but the, at the end of the day, we can share all of this. What we do is very tangible, and I hope that everyone agrees that what they say, see here, they would like to go away and, and emulate in some way. Anyway, in, um, what I would like to do now is to pass over to Michael Portillo, who's very kindly agreed to open our exhibition. So, Michael. Uh, James, thank you very much indeed. Um, I've been here for a while, and I was aware that um, you lot reminded me of something, uh, and I was trying to uh, remember what it was. Uh, and uh, it's come back to me now. There was an occasion when the Home Secretary visited a maximum security prison. <laughs> and, uh, and when he got there, they said, you know, Home Secretary, why don't you jump up on the parapet, and we will assemble all the prisoners in the courtyard, and you can make a speech to them. They were a pretty motley collection. They were thieves and muggers and burglars and rapists, <laughs> arsonists, murderers, uh, Jeffrey and Jonathan. Um, the, the, the Home Secretary had a pretty good idea what sort of speech to make, but you know, how do you begin? You can hardly say it's an enormous pleasure uh, to be here today, neither can you say, you know, rarely do I have the opportunity of addressing such a distinguished audience as this. So in the end he hit on the Mojus, he said, I just can't tell you how pleased I am to see so many of you here today. And, uh, <laughs> It does, does seem extraordinarily appropriate in these very crowded circumstances. Uh, there wasn't much of a word of introduction to me, uh, but perhaps I can just fill in the blanks and tell you that um, in my political career I reached the heady heights of being at one time a future Prime Minister. Uh, I'm now a former future Prime Minister. Uh, rather a large number of former future Prime Ministers in Britain. In fact, we formed ourselves into a little club of former future Prime Ministers. I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that we just welcomed David Miliband as a new member. Um, <laughs> And we're looking forward to uh, welcoming Ed Miliband into your course. But, um, uh, the, the, the reason I'm able to be here entertaining you is that I uh, lost my seat uh, a few years ago in a blaze of uh, publicity. Uh, the moment, rather humiliating moment actually, I lost my seat and my chance of leaving the Conservative Party on a ministerial job, all, all gone in a second. That moment of my humiliation was subsequently voted by Channel 4 viewers and observer readers their third favourite moment of the 20th century. <laughs> Apparently in that particular poll, I narrowly beat the assassination of President Ceausescu into fourth place, uh, an accomplishment of which I feel very, very proud. Um, but today I stand before you, uh, improbably enough, as the chairman of the uh, Federation of British Artists. Now this is um, all rather confusing because you are here tonight at the Royal Society of British Artists, uh, which is one of the member societies of the Federation of British Artists. But because I am chairman of the Federation of British Artists, which uh, manage the, the Mal Galleries, I feel that a word of apology uh, to you is appropriate for the sort of black hole of Calcutta conditions in which you find yourself this evening. Because in a normal year, this exhibition, of course, would be spread not only from this gallery and the North Gallery, which I hope we'll go and have a look at, uh, but it would also be spread uh, behind us. Uh, but the gallery behind us uh, is being rebuilt at the moment and will very shortly reopen and will be called the Threadneedle Space because Threadneedle is the sponsor of that development. And those of you who obviously have known that gallery before, I hope you'll be very impressed by its transformation when it opens shortly. And one of the things that's lovely is that it's going to be much bigger, it's going to have some beautiful wall space, it's going to have windows to the outside world so that it's going to allow in natural light and indeed it's going to allow people outside to see inside the Mal galleries from the street for the first time. So maybe more and more people will know that we're here, although it scarcely seems necessary this evening to let people, more people know that we're here. But when you come back next year, uh, you will be um, using that space and, and that will give you much more space. But um, at the Federation of uh, British Artists, we um, do encourage our member societies to um, maintain their standards, uh, to be challenging, to think very carefully about the way they <clears throat> hang their works and display their works. And uh, I think today's exhibition you know, clearly meets all these criteria. There is an extremely high standard, as you would expect, um, from the Royal Society of British Artists. Um, 
The visitors are superb. A lot of the work is indeed uh, edgy and challenging. I'm only sorry that you've had to put in these islands, which I think work quite nicely, but nonetheless, they don't give uh, some of the visitors that you might otherwise have uh, chosen to uh, put in. The Royal Society of British Artists, uh, founded in 1823, I'm extremely conscious of the honor of addressing this society this evening. As you say, your 295th exhibition. Uh, you were driven to the Mal Galleries in part because your original gallery, I think in Suffolk Street, which was designed by John Nash, uh, from the moment that it was built, had a problem with a collapsing roof. Uh, so you're very welcome uh, under this roof. And we very much hope that we won't have a tr any problems with a collapsing roof in our new thread needle space, which will open uh, very shortly. I, I just want to say that this is not only an exhibition during this uh, week. Uh, it is also a series of meetings, a series of talks, a series of seminars. Offers all sorts of opportunities to artists and <coughs> budding artists. And I do want to mention what's going on in the North Gallery, where um, six formers uh, are exhibiting their works of art. Some of them are for sale. I've not made my way through the crowd into that yet, but I believe that it is very rewarding. And if the Royal Society of uh, British Artists is to pass into its third century, uh, fully peopled with great artists, then of course we do have to encourage the young, and I'm delighted that that uh, effort um, is being made. Um, so, it, it gives me a very great pleasure to declare the exhibition open. Um, I, I might just put in a plug in my mic for a television program I do. Um, <laughs> no, no, seriously, you've got to take every opportunity. I, I, I do a television program on Thursday evenings. It's, um, it's called uh, This Week. And um, for most of the last nine years, it's essentially consisted of me and a Labour MP called Diane Abbott sitting on a sofa that's far too small for us. And, um, uh, what some people don't know is that uh, Diane Abbott and I um, were at school together. So, um, how can I put this in, you know, mixed and polite company, you know? We go back a long way, you know, we, uh, you know, we, 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 we share a certain amount of emotional baggage. We, we know where the bodies are buried, if you know what I mean. And, and this program is on very late at night, actually. And um, so, you know, night after night, very late at night, we're, we're sat there, squeezed together on this sofa, um, surrounded by our emotional baggage. Uh, we know nobody's watching. And, um, and, and in these circumstances, we do sometimes get a little bit uh, tactile. You know, I quite like to put my arm around Diane and give her a big squeeze, and she quite likes to rub my right knee. And, <laughs> well, there's no reason for you to laugh. Why not? Um, and recently, we've done audience research, actually, and we've discovered that our, our audience is 50% um, insomniac, and 50% uh, pervert. Uh, and I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who are regular watchers. Thank you very much indeed. And my pleasure in declaring this exhibition open.